Hey, this is Andrew Long with JournalismGIS.com, and I just wanted to uh, put out another quick tutorial there. I've been playing around with uh, Arc 10's new time uh, feature, so I kind of wanted to run through that. Uh, basically, what I have here is I've got a world uh, layer. It's a shape file for, for the world uh, boundaries um, and some data. Uh, this is um, shipping piracy data or something along those lines. Uh, what's interesting about this data is that it's got its time, it's got a time. Uh, field to it. So that's when we open up our, our attribute table. So I'm going to right click on it and open it up. And what you'll notice here is that in, in our uh, attributes we have uh, a field that is date. Uh, dates. And it's in a, a standard format. This is a month, day, and year. And so to use time obviously you have to have a field that can be uh, dates. Um, and I, you know, it, it can also be um, not only date, but actually time, so hours and, and those kind of stuff. We're just going to look at um, ours is pretty much just date driven. So essentially, we just want to break down this uh, layer and look at it in, in kind of a time sequence. So I'm going to close my attribute table. To, uh, to get at the time feature, I'm, I'm going to either double click or right click on this point layer, and I'm going to open up the properties window. Which is this is your your traditional properties window. You know this is where you set your symbology and do uh, your labels and that kind of stuff. But then in ten, there's a new one called time, and so what we want to do is we want to enable time on this layer. And essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to look at breaking this up, um, and we're going to do it by the time field that date of occurrence, um, and we're going to select um, how we want to break it down. Now you can set this at intervals, so you know I can set this at five years, um, so that it breaks up the occurrences every five years, or however you want to do it. Or I can calculate what's best, and when you hit calculate, it's going to calculate the start and the beginning, and it's going to kind of give you a breakdown of what's best. Um, and so we're going to look at that. Now, if you had times, you could look at time zone or time offsets. Um, one thing that we are going to click down here is display data cumulatively. And what this is going to do is, is when we look at it in a slider, it's going to add each interval to the, to the one previous. Now if you turn this off, you will actually be able to look at, at the, the data points that fill that, two, that two year or five year interval. So this is kind of important uh, to decide how you're mostly looking at your data and how to visualize it. So I'm going to hit OK. And what this done is it's, it's actually made this uh, layer time enabled. And so what will happen is up here in my uh, toolbox up here, there's a time slider. So I can open the time slider. And when I look at the time slider, it's going to give me uh, a couple of things. It's actually broken down this data in intervals um, by two years. And I can actually play this data and look at uh, how it... Uh, populates this map by by every two years, um, which can be very valuable for either pulling out um, you know certain areas or comparing. Um, I'm sure there's some advanced temporal analysis stuff that you can do um, with this once you have uh, it kind of broken up into two time segments. Now, for me, I just kind of want to make a little uh, quick time movie uh, of this. Some of an area of this that I can deploy on the web. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to pick an area that I want to kind of look at, change the extent. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to look at this area and what I want to do is make a, uh, a quick time movie. So up here you can click this button and it'll export to video. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to click that and I'm going to call it, uh, um, Pirates, and I'm going to save it, and it and it's going to basically export this as a as an AVI. So I get to decide what kind of compression quality, what kind of uh, somewhat video codec that I want. It's not really extensive, but it's there, um, and some of my frames frame stuff. And so I'm just going to hit OK, and down here you'll notice that it's processing. It should take a few minutes. Uh, it's going really going to depend on your your data on how long it takes. So I'm just going to pause here a minute because you don't want to see this uh, uh, process. All right, so it took less than a minute to uh, process um, this into an AVI. And now we can open it and uh, basically play it. 
Um, now, one thing you could probably do with this is you could uh, import it into Final Cut Pro. Since you know that each segment is two years, you could add a date down at the bottom. There's other things you can do with this. Um, this is just a quick tutorial because I just wanted to show you a little bit about how it breaks it up. I think the advantage to um, once you can break something up into uh, temporal uh, layer, you know, a layer into like temporal um, sections, I think you can do some analysis and some things with it. Um, so I'll be looking more into those type of things that you can actually do with with that. But this is just a quick look at at uh, how to do this. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye.